Sex and Algebra 1, Lesson 50. Today we're going to talk about graphing. You guys, we, we may have dabbled in this in previous years, uh, but we're going to be adding to this a ton in your algebra career. So I'm going to go over it from the beginning. And if this sounds familiar, you can just relax and think about how smart you are. Um, and if you don't remember, that's fine. No judgment. This is a number line. You've seen it a hundred times. Um, we can write them however we want, but this one I'm going to start at zero. And I'm just going to put a few positive numbers in here. It keeps going infinitely. And then I'm going to put a few negatives over here. That's cool. We've used these quite a bit, right? You probably used them when you were a little kid just to understand how numbers fit together. Um, and what we're going to do that's a little different is we're going to take another number line and we're going to lie it over the top of this number line like this. So they make a grid, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have positive numbers and I'm gonna make the positive numbers go up. And then the negative numbers are gonna go down. This way, we can graph two locations at once. And the way we keep that all straight is we call this the x-axis and we call th this the re-original number line, and we call this one the y-axis, okay? Make sure you are copying this all down as you go. Just like always, remember whatever I write down, you write down. Pause me if I go too fast. Okay, so this is what we call a Cartesian coordinate system. And this is because it was invented by a guy named Descartes. So that's his name, right? It's just he's the same guy who developed the Cartesian well. Uh, but anyway, that's where it came from. He was a famous 17th century philosopher and mathematician. Rene Descartes. Oh, he has an S at the end of his name. And this is not an uppercase, just so you know. It's all one word. Descartes. Um, Rene, which is a boy's name. And he's from the 1600s, French dude. All right. He developed this, so that's why we name it after him. But we also sometimes call it a rectangular coordinate system. And I'll show you why that name makes sense in just a second. Now, whenever we want to locate a point on this system, right, we can use what's essentially an address to locate it. The address takes the form of what we call an ordered pair. We always write it in this format. We do parentheses, and then I'm writing the generic format, right, x and y. We put in the value of the x-coordinate the value of the y-coordinate that we want to graph. All right, so let's do an example. Um, example A is that we want to graph the point 3, 3. Okay, so that means go to 3 on the x-axis and then go to 3 on the y-axis. And where those two locations intersect, that's our point. So here's the x-axis. It's positive 3, so we go 1, 2, 3. Here's this. And then what we can do is kind of draw a dotted line, and then we go to positive three on the y-axis because that's the y value as well, and we see that our point is located right there. And that's why they call it rectangulars that when we kind of, we don't always have to draw these lines as dotted, but we see that from, this is called the origin where the zeros are, we kind of draw a rectangle, right? Out from the x value and the y value and where they meet, that is our point. So this is point A, which was three, three. Make sense? Okay, let's try another point. B is negative four, zero. I'm writing that one bigger because I wanna make sure that minus sign is, comes in loud and clear. Always the x value comes first, then the y value. So the x value is negative four. This is the x axis, so I better go out here. I better put in a negative four, okay? And then zero on the y-axis. Okay, so that means we stay right here. So I don't can't really draw a rectangle for this one, but you get the idea. 
So this is point minus four, zero. And we label our points just like I did here so that we know the name of that point that was important to us. C, zero, negative three. Okay, so this time zero is the x value and zero is right here. It's the x, so it's here side to side and now we wanna look at the y value, that's the up and down, that's negative three. So we go from here down and here's the point, zero, negative three. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then our fourth point, D, is four, negative two. So we go to four on the x-axis, and I have to draw it, and then negative two on the y-axis, which is down here. So this time, if I wanna draw my rectangle, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing it so that you understand how I am finding these points. This is four, minus two, okay? So these two don't really have rectangles because zero was one of the coordinates, so there's nowhere to, nowhere to draw the line from, but these two we can imagine how the rectangles look. You don't have to draw the rectangles. Again, I'm just doing that to help you understand. Um, so it's this is like an address or instructions on a map to help us find certain points. We're gonna do a ton of work with graphing we're just scratching the surface. The last thing I wanna tell you is that, notice how there are like four boxes in our overall system. We call those quadrants, quad, one fourth, right? Quadrants, and they are named, and we usually write the names with Roman numerals. So this is quadrant one, starting here. This is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. When you get into Algebra 2, you'll understand why we go in that order. There's a specific reason, but it starts here with one, which is kind of the natural beginning place because this is where positive, positive numbers are. Um, and you'll notice there's a pattern to whether X and Y are positive or negative. That will help us determine which quadrant, but we'll get into that later. So one, two, three, and four are the names of the quadrants. Uh, that is all we need to do for the practice. All you're doing is being given more points and asked to draw them. Here's my rule of thumb. Um, you need to know how to draw these properly. The plus, zeros in the middle, arrowheads on each end. Um, in the beginning, I want to have you at least put X. You don't have to write out axis, but put X and Y so you'll remember which is which. And then here's my rule of thumb, you guys. Only draw the number of numbers that you need. There's no sense in making your grid go all the way out to 10 if the numbers that you have to graph are two and three, right? So just make it as big as you need it to be. And then if you see when I needed a little more space, I just squished it in. I could have drawn my line out more. Um, don't erase and start over. Don't draw great big graphs so that you know you'll have space. Just keep it simple and add what you need as you go. Okay, yay, that's the end of lesson 51. We're done.